June 29th, 1995. The Sampung department store collapsed. A terrible disaster caused by selfishness. People started to break through the pile of rubble of a building that collapsed to find and rescue survivors. Among them, there was a father looking for his son. After the accident, the father looked for his son for more than 20 hours every day. He snuck into a prohibited area and started to dig into a pile of collapsed buildings. As time went by, the son's chances of survival became slim, but the father never gave up. Was it because of the father's desperation? Finally, the son was miraculously rescued 11 days after the disaster and returned to his father's arms. Children were playing on the railroad tracks in the quiet countryside. When suddenly, a freight train that couldn't see the children was running at full speed. There was someone who was watching everything. It was the children's father. The father jumped into the railroad and pushed the children out of the way. The children were safe without any injuries, but the father couldn't avoid the train and eventually died on the way to the hospital. Sal, Shin, Pu, Chong. A father's love that would rather lay down his life to save his children. Paternal love, a father's instinctive love that's hotter than a furnace and stronger than death. Where does the wondrous power of love come from. All creation is born and thrives in the providence of the Creator. The animals running in the field, the birds flying freely in the sky, the fish swimming in the sea, there is an absolute principle that cannot be interrupted. That is, parents must exist to conceive and create life. After the sperm fertilizes an egg, the embryo is then implanted in the uterus. A mother begins to endure a long pregnancy. Even after giving birth, she is responsible for breastfeeding and taking care of her child. A mother's love instinct in giving birth and raising her children is acknowledged as the most noble love in the whole world 
and is constantly explored in all walks of life. Nevertheless, according to a recent study, paternal love is drawing just as much attention as maternal love. It's said that to give birth and raise a child, a father's love is just as essential as a mother's love. In all animals, we can see fathers directly express their love for their young. We can see the same phenomenon in the fish in the sea, an unceasing love of a father for his children. The female forms the eggs and lays them. Then the male makes a net to protect its young until they hatch. Some tropical fish carry their eggs in their mouths all day long just to protect them from predators. Worrying that the young newborns might be eaten by predators, fathers care for them by putting them on their back with great concern and unceasing love. Fathers will wholeheartedly look after their young until they can survive on their own, a daily battle in this habitat called nature. The sacrificial love of a father will have him offer his whole body for his young in a fierce world of predators. Although they seem to be small, insignificant creatures, where does this great devotional love come from? Professor Catherine Dulock from Harvard University made an interesting discovery about paternal love that was published in the science journal, Nature. Sexually experienced males and females display parental care. A subset of gallinin expressing neurons in the medial preoptic area that are specifically activated during male and female parenting. Optogenetic activation of these neurons in virgin males suppresses intermale and pup-directed aggression and induces pup grooming. According to the report, when a male mouse becomes a father, its body changes in order to raise its baby. Normally, male mice attack the young ones or bite to kill them. However, the male mouse that became a father started to build its nest and search for food after its babies were born. The research team found that the smell of the baby mouse stimulates a certain nerve cell and changes the father mouse's behavioral habits to a paternal mode so it can take care of its babies. The research team named this nerve cell the paternal switch since it activates paternal love just like turning on a switch through the birth of its babies. Studies have also been done at Princeton University in the United States that shows paternal love is already present in father cells. The research team studied a father monkey that carries its baby on his back for over 15 hours a day. Marmoset fathers take care of their babies all day long. Based on a study that compared the brains of monkeys that had babies to monkeys that did not have babies, the brains of monkeys that had babies contained neurocells that triggered paternal love, which allowed them to take care of their young with the utmost care. Father marmoset monkeys are some of the most devotional fathers on the earth. The prefrontal cortex is the part of the brain that controls planning. Research has shown that father marmoset's brains have more cells and connective tissues than monkeys that haven't had children. Researchers also found prolactin, oxytocin, and vasopressin, known as paternal hormones, in the prefrontal cortex as well. 
Hormones, even in very small amounts, have a significant effect on our bodies. A person cannot choose whether or not this hormone is secreted. Research has shown that this hormone affects maternal and paternal love. Vasopressin is known as the hormone that helps the body stay hydrated and maintain homeostasis, especially in males. However, the vasopressin hormone works differently for fathers. For men without children, it only functions as a diuretic and moisturizing hormone. But for men with children, this hormone helps them to love their children more and be more devoted to their family. We found that the vasopressin hormone is secreted in very tiny amounts in men who don't have children, but it's secreted quite a bit in men with children. Many scientists believe that the vasopressin hormone helps a man to have more fatherly emotions. There's a paternal instinct that reacts and works in the body before the brain can even process it. Expectant fathers may experience noticeable physical changes, like their pregnant partners, because of fast hormonal changes. This is sympathetic pregnancy, or Cuvade syndrome. During a study, a research team found that out of 280 men that had pregnant partners, some experienced Cuvade syndrome. They had back pain, stomach pain, weight gain, and vomiting, which are all similar to pregnancy symptoms. Sympathetic pregnancy symptoms are a group of symptoms that some men experience when they're about to become a father. Hormonal symptoms related to pregnancy, such as nausea, dizziness, reduced appetite, fatigue, lack of sleep, breast enlargement, and abdominal expansion are mostly caused by prolactin and estrogen hormones. However, in recent studies, incredibly, it's been proven that soon-to-be fathers do experience these same hormones in similar and increasing quantities as expecting mothers. That's why about 70% of men who will become fathers may experience similar symptoms. And the reasons why we're seeing all of these things is um, in the male, we'll see some changes in testosterone levels at times. So sometimes the testosterone um, levels in expectant fathers and new fathers will go down a little bit. We'll also see raises in hormones like oxytocin, uh, which is that pair bonding hormone that we see, which bonds you to your child or bonds you to your partner. So we're gonna see these hormonal changes and these behavioral changes and even changes in the actual physical body in response to a pregnancy in both the mother and the father, which kind of, I guess, highlights, um, in humans at least, the importance of the roles of both of them. We can find examples of paternal love in the Bible as well. Jesus showed unconditional paternal love through the example of the prodigal son. In a village, there was a rich man and his son. One day, the son asked his father to give him his inheritance in advance. Once he received it, he went to a country far away. The son squandered all his wealth in wild living, and he began to be in need. He tried to fill up his starving stomach with the pods that pigs eat, but he wasn't even allowed to eat them.
Then the son remembered his father and decided to go back home. He walked with shame and guilt and finally approached the entrance of his hometown. He saw someone running towards him and calling his name. It was his father. His father hugged him and shed tears of joy. This is an example of a parable that shows the unconditional love of a father. Even though his son wasted his wealth, his father forgave all of his son's wrongdoings because he repented. The Bible teaches us about a father's holy and precious love that sacrifices his own life to save his children. It is the story of Jesus Christ, who did not avoid the punishment on the cross. Instead, he accepted such a sacrificial path to save his sinful children. The crucifixion is known as the most painful and cruelest punishment in human history. The way that he would have been nailed um, from his hands would actually have been from his arms, so through the wrist. So as the nails would go through the wrist, um, what we would see, so because we have a lot of nerve endings here running from our fingers down, these are all in the same lines of nerves, which we call spinal nerves that will go up to our spine. Um, here we'll experience as the nails would go through these bones, the wrist bones, which are called the carpal bones, um, those bones would split and splinter. So imagine the feeling of your bones breaking, shattering, um, muscles being torn, and nerves being disrupted. And that pain, of course, would travel up to the brain and we'd experience profound pain in both limbs. Jesus Christ can do anything if it is his will. He could have even escaped the crucifixion. Nevertheless, why did Jesus accept to endure the painful crucifixion? The night before Jesus was crucified, he earnestly prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane. While praying all night long, his drops of sweat became blood. We can see our Father's earnest heart to save his children. Father knew if he turned away, his children would never escape their sins. Ultimately, Jesus chose a path of sacrifice for his children. There are several fishing locations near our hospital. Sometimes, people come to the hospital with fish hooks stuck in their hands. The tip of the hook is curled, so you can't remove it by yourself. We must first inject the hand with anesthesia and then cut off the tip of the hook to push it out. Those who suffer from this injury describe it as extremely painful. When I say, let me take a look, they hide their hands from me. Also, some get injured working at construction sites. Whenever a bone breaks and penetrates the skin, the pain is severe. I have to treat these patients immediately, but many refuse any help saying, don't touch me, leave me alone. They scream and stop me from touching it. Why? Because the pain is indescribable. Very large iron nails were used to crucify Jesus, and a fish hook can't compare in size. If you were to see the size of those iron nails during that time, they were about five inches long and nearly an inch thick. It can never compare to a fish hook. First of all, Jesus must have felt the horrendous pain. Many patients won't even let me touch nor see their fish hook injuries. Yet Jesus' hands were stabbed and pierced by huge nails while the soldiers erected his cross. The pain must have been agonizing when his skin was tearing. The stress and pressure from the pain would have made it even greater. In this situation, symptoms of intravascular coagulation occur. His blood would have kept dripping non-stop. They even put a crown of thorns on his head. Wearing a crown of thorns allowed continuous bleeding from the nails in his hands. 
It would have caused a hypovolemic shock. That is when all the blood is drained and there are signs of shock. And at the same time, because of the severe pain, blood vessels are blocked, which causes more pain. People who've never experienced this will never know. When Jesus came to this world, he put on the flesh and overcame all pain. Therefore, when he spoke his last words, it is finished, he clearly fulfilled his great purpose and will. Moreover, how can anyone describe the pain Jesus endured on the cross? I think it's a father's love. He was able to endure such great pain because of the love he had. Jesus' love and sacrifice endured excruciating pain for six long hours. And, in the end, he gave up his life. This is something that can never be explained except for the love of a father for his child. Paternal love is seen not only in humankind, but also in animals. How can paternal love that is found in all things happen by chance? This question is answered in the book of Romans. For since the creation of the world, God's invisible quality, His eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood from what has been made. The fact a father's instinctive love for his child is reflected in all things, means the heart of the Creator possesses the same love. Since paternal love is in all things, wouldn't it be possible to resemble God's holy and noble love for humankind?